Okay, so we'll go. Yeah. Yep. Happy Christmas and welcome to your Christmas pack. For those of you who uh, were lucky enough to to get one, this is it. This is everything that's in your pack. We're going to go through it, explain what you have, what I've done to it, and what you have to do to it. It's uh, we're trying to take the hassle and the stress out of Christmas Day free, and this is as easy as I can make it. So to start with the main item. For those of you of the small pack, this is your bird. This is uh, one turkey breast weighing anywhere between two and a half to three kg. It's uh, been seasoned, trimmed, ready to go, ready for the oven. For those of you who have the double pack, there'll be two here. So it'll be here and another one sitting right alongside it. We have mounted it on a bit of rough cut veg to lift it off the pan so it doesn't stick. Okay, this is your steamed vegetables. There's uh, parsnips, carrots and sprouts, all pre-cooked, all vacuum packed, all fresh. We're going to season them, butter them, put some flaked almonds in with them. The nuttiness of the flaked almonds will work really well. You, you regret help. Work really well with the vegetables. So if you have an allergy, you can omit this. I haven't put this in because of that. Okay, this is your... So you're not putting them, they're not in every pack? No, just okay. to avoid in case anybody has a nut allergy. Okay. Yep, you know what I mean? So idea. I thought I would serve it separately. Uh, this is your potatoes. Again, anybody who's double pack, you're just going to get twice as much. This is your pack for it. So this is your eight portions of potatoes, which have been steamed and riced. They're lump free. This is your seasoning pot, which has butter, cream and milk in it. I didn't add salt and pepper to it. Thought you could do it yourself. This time, do it to taste. Some people like it a bit peppery than others, and some people like it a bit salty, and I'm really always complaining that I'm too heavy handed with pepper. You prefer far too much pepper? Far too much pepper. This is your gammon. Uh, it has been steamed and vacuum packed. I haven't glazed it. I'm going to teach you how to make a glaze. We're going to score it, put, the, put it into the oven, let the fat render it down, then take it back out. Then, once it's back out, after we've made our glaze, we'll put the glaze over it. And that's our gammon. Uh, this is our roasties. These again have been steamed. They've been marinated in duck fat, fresh thyme, loads and loads of rock salt, just to dry, take the moisture out of them. What we're going to do with these, we have two options of these, we can either do these separately, or what I like to do is dot them around the tray once we take the tin foil off the... Uh, turkey. Turkey. Make it pretty looking. Make it pretty looking. Uh, finally, the most important part in my opinion is your fresh herb stuffing. Oh, jeez, I, I, oh, I forgot about the gravy. That's your gravy there. This has been uh, freshly made with uh, chicken stock. Uh, doesn't matter how bad your your Christmas dinner will be, a good gravy could hide a multitude of sins. But like I say, this is completely an aid proof. Is that why you always bring gravy whenever I'm cooking? Yeah. This, uh, this, this is an aid proof. Once you get your turkey into the oven, there's nothing to do for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. The turkey just has to do its own thing. What we have done here with this turkey is uh, somebody has asked me about buying a turkey off the bone, how do you keep it moist? What I have done with this turkey is I have wrapped it first in cling film. It has been seasoned with salt and pepper, drizzled with ripseed oil, uh, put some fresh thyme in it, and then I wrap the whole lot in cling film. That seals it in so that the moisture and the juices can't go nowhere. The cling film doesn't burn, it'll not stick to the turkey and then we've wrapped it in tin foil and what we're going to do with this is we're going to put it into an oven at 180. We're so going to need to get the oven on out of heat? Well not right now but Christmas day though. Oh, <laughs> this is Christmas day. Oh sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, what did I say? Uh, 180 and after about an hour what we're going to do is carefully slit it, take the tin foil off, take the cling film off, leave the skin on. So we can do that when we're doing it? We'll do that. All them things? Yeah but I'm just walking it through this. Okay. Maddie has been much better than you. <laughs> okay, so, like I said, nothing to do now. We'll put the turkey. Go ahead. Can I ask what's on, the, what's on there? And do you have carrots? I just have a bit of rough cut veg of carrots, shallots, and a wee bit of celery. Doesn't really matter what you have, and I hate it all, nothing at all. It's just to lift it off the oh. lift it off the base of the tray. Okay, so stop it sticking. Well, it's not really stop sticking, so the juices fall down, then you can baste it so it's not sitting there. Ah, right, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is going to help help with the base. Of course, it's all about flavour too. These are all, are, these are all going to, the juices that come out of turkey, they're all going to mix through this and it's all, it's all going to give you flavour. And a lot of people would make the gravy out of this, but 
You don't have to. I've made you ready for you. But the people that didn't get a pack. Oh, uh, snooze you lose. <laughs> uh, but anyway. That's not finished. It's a way slow ringing. But anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this to the album. Remember, this isn't a one person job. All the people need to help. So Anne Marie is going to take it to the album. So with the, you have the oven on I have the oven on 180. When you have the oven on now for a while, it needs, the, the board needs to go in and needs to be hot right away. So the, oven, the, the board's going to go in. And again, if you have a double pack, it's the same thing. It's still 180, it's still about an hour. See, I've got myself now. That would be also hilarious. No, I didn't. And that's it. Now what you do is you go, you pour yourself a drink, you relax, and enjoy your Christmas. See you in an hour. Now, uh, your turkey's been in for an hour. I'm sure you've had a glass of wine, as Anne-Marie has had. It's... So this is, this, is this, this what we're going to need now? Well, this is what you need now. This is a pot. It is a pot. Clearly. These are three pots. <laughs> uh, we need a large pot to heat our mash. A uh, small pot for the gravy. And we're going to make our glaze for our gammon in this. So our gammon is the next thing we're going to do. We're going to put it on a tray. And we're going to slide it into the oven. The oven's still at 180. We want it to be nice and hot. What we want to do is that for the gammon to render and get crispy before we glaze it. That way the fat will... Uh, but the gammon's already cooked. Yeah. Yes. But there's fat on it. Don't worry about the fat being on it. Once you put it into the hot oven, the fat will start to render down. I have it scored for you. And once so you put, can put I it ask, in. Can I ask a question? Anybody that didn't get back, mm -hmm. how long did you steam that camera for? Well, we steamed this for about four hours, but if you're going to. A lot of people wouldn't have the, the option of a steamer and we normally don't steam the gammon because we don't do them in this huge quantity that we had to do for the packs. We would normally cook them in a pot, but you never ever let a gammon boil. You always simmer it really low and really slow. You put into your water, uh, thyme, rosemary, bay leaf, orange if you have it, some shallots, and you just let it sit on a nice low heat and never let it boil. The minute you boil it, the gammon is going to get tough. So never ever let your gammon boil and just say, like I say, Take the rind, the hard skin off it, but leave the fat on it. I took a little bit too much fat of this one, but I've left loads of fat in yours. Okay? I'll clean up after you. But as you can see, it's all been stored. This fat here now is, uh, this is all going to render down. So we're going to go straight to the oven. And once we put this in the oven, when the oven doors open, we're going to take the turkey out. And you'll see what way the turkey is. It's going to be pale. But it's going to be beautiful and moist, it's going to be loads of lovely juices. For, you always tell me not to open the oven too often, for I look away in with my head. Yeah, once you open the oven, you're letting heat out. That's why you don't open the oven. Okay, so keep the oven shut. Yeah, you need to... Take it out now when you put the ham in. Uh, the, the, one, the one thing will do too. Okay. You know, I mean, you're, you're dropping temperature all the time. And looking at it, it's not going to make you cook any quicker. I know. Huh? It's the same as stirring stuff. No? Yeah, people need to leave shit alone. Okay, so... Then we go. I'm going to take this out. You remember? This is super hot. It's been in the oven for an hour. Uh, and, you, and you've got asbestos hands. So you do. So now, I see if this was. Do you want me to do this so that other people can see how to do it if it's way warm? Because you touch everything and it's roasting. I, yeah. So how, you, huh? how do you get this off then if. A, if you're a normal lay yeah. person? Okay, so. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, well, you can do it if you want, but normally what you do is just, just slide one off the other. Right. Okay, so the tray will go back in. Okay. And again, the gammon is going to render down when it's in there. What we're going to do now is we're going to take, we're going to, this turkey's not cooked, this turkey's still raw in the middle, but you're not going to see that. What we're going to do, we're going to take, we're going to slit it. Do you want a knife? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but tr don't do it down there, you don't want to break the skin. Okay? Okay. So come down here. Right. And just peel that off and you can see that's the cling foam that I've wrapped it in. It's all the fresh thyme. You still see you still see traces of the rapeseed oil. Yeah. Okay? So roll it over and out she comes. Roll over and roll her back. Oh no, you've cling foam on it. Okay, so we still have cling foam on this. Okay. And you, like I say, you still see traces of rapeseed oil that the, the turkey's been married in. This turkey's still pretty pink in the middle, but that's what we're looking for. We don't want it to be subject to a lot of heat straight away to cook through because A, it'll dry out, and B, it'll burn, and you want to retain the moisture inside the breast. 
without burning the, the actual board. So now we're gonna we're gonna put it back into the oven at the same temperature it was for about half an hour, 40 minutes, and it's gonna crisp up beautiful. We're gonna baste it two or three times. And see it, it comes off just that simple. I know I have. I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions whenever you put it back in the oven. Alright, I'm looking forward to that. Now so you just took off the tin foil, took off the plate. Give me out the rock salt out of the, the press there, but I have already seasoned this for you, and like I say, there's no fat on this, look at that. That's all natural juices, there's very little fat. This is a lunch. What we're trying to do here is uh, make it as tasty as we can, make it as hassle-free as we can, and also make it as healthy, healthy as we can. Yeah. You know, we're going to give it a wee bit more salt, just to crisp up that skin. We're going to leave the hair on it, we're going to put it back into the oven, we're not well far away as far as cooking goes, half an hour, 40 minutes and we're done. Can we open the oven door? We'll give the, no, I'm good. We'll give the gammon 20 minutes and while that's doing that, we're going to make the glaze. Okay, so. See you in a little bit. Okay, and she goes. So well, anybody that doesn't get a pack, they get their, their crown of turkey from the butchers. Okay. Local, support local, yeah. Yeah. Supporting local butchers. And um, so they wrap it in cling film first. And well, if you have your turkey that's on the bone, it's going to be harder to wrap it in cling film because it's on the bone. Uh, the reason I've wrapped it in cling film is to, is to re re retain moisture. If yours is on the bone, then you wouldn't really wrap it in, t in cling film. You would roast it, but I would, I would maybe coat it with either a really good quality streaky bacon and then maybe tin foil as well on top of that. Okay. Do the rapeseed oil and just roast it on the bone. And then same process after an hour. But if you've bought a turkey with legs and all on it, then that bird's going to take a good, the guts of, depending on size, but it's going to take a good two and a half, three hours because with the with the, the joint of the leg meets the breast, it's pretty dense in there. It takes a long time for it to cook. Right. So, um, but wrap and clean film and then. That is That's my question. Sorry, but that, that's because I don't know and. Um, that's okay. Now, uh, so we're making a glaze. I'll be back over this side of the way. Okay, so our glaze for our gammon. Normally what people do is just uh, brush over mustard, stick cloves in it, throw brown sugar over it. And gammons are naturally salty. Don't add salt to your gammon. It's nat it is naturally salty. But what we're going to do here is you have all this in your pack. This is apple vinegar. It's a sweet vinegar. This is uh, soft dark brown sugar, Dijon mustard, and marmalade. The reason we're doing marmalade is because it's sweet, uh, uh, there's acid in it, and you need a, a good quality pastry brush. This is a. If you didn't have a pastry brush, can you use a paintbrush? <sighs> yeah. What you could do is, if you had herbs, just tie them around the back of your. Wooden spoon. Okay. So if you had a bunch of rosemary, a bunch of thyme, just tie it around the back of your wooden spoon. Use that paintbrush. It'll sort of congeal and stick together. This is a silicone paintbrush. They're only a couple of quid, and they're really, really good to use, and they don't burn on hot products. So what we're going to do? Is this we're going to make this glaze really, really quickly. And all this glaze does is sweeten the gammon because the gammon is naturally oh, salty. Makes it yummy. Huh? Makes it yummy. That's the technical term for it. Makes it yummy. And it is Christmas after all. Yes, yeah. that's what you want. You so what we're doing here now is we're going to heat the apple, uh, the apple cider vinegar. Then we're going to add the brown sugar. Let the whole lot sort of caramelise a wee bit. Then add the marmalade. marmalade. Once that all starts to get sticky and caramelised and really brown and gooey, then we'll go back and check our gammon. We'll bring our gammon out. We'll brush it liberally with Dijon mustard, which adds a bit of heat. We'll give it a wee crunch of black pepper, which also gives it a bit of heat. We won't add salt at all. No salt. Because. It's salty enough. It's salty enough. And then we'll put it back in the oven. And every once in a while, when we're basting our turkey, we'll baste it again. So, where's uh, Maddie's spat pointer? Maddie's pointer. Maddie's pointer. Maddie's now a teenager. She's no longer involved in it. Ah, she'll be down later. Huh? She'll be down later. You don't know that. Ah, she will. You're stuck with me now. <sighs> This is going to happen every she moves off to college. Now! <laughs> We're going away and he keeps coming back. Uh, that's because you make it too appealing for him, that's why. We need to make it a crap hole. 
And like I say, all this is in your pack. I have made this uh, as easy for you as I possibly can. Christmas dinner shouldn't be a chore where everybody falls out. And it's so stressful and there's so much washing up. All you're going to have here is three pots, three trays, and whatever pits you use. And it's that simple. Don't let this reduce down too much because you'll burn off the cider. Just bring it to the boil, nice and slowly. Once it gets to the boil, we're going to add a brown sugar. We'll stir that until it's dissolved. Some smell of it. Hmm. Some smell of it. Cider vinegar, yeah. Mm. And again, the marmalade, all it's doing is it's adding sweetness and it's adding that citrony zing to it that you normally Citrusy. wouldn't get. Citrusy. Citrusy, yeah. And we'll just, we'll just baste the gammon and what you want it to be is beautiful and almost burnt on the outside but but it'll still the end of it all but it'll still maintain that nice moisture on the inside because you've caramelized it and you've, you haven't allowed the heat to penetrate the whole way through you haven't allowed the moisture to escape because you've burnt the outside of it with a so with that, with keeps with the that keeps the inside of it nice and with moist. what you're doing now yeah with, okay. you know the, the rendering the fat And it is, it's, it's, it's super simple. It it's, is when you know what you're doing. Yeah, but I have left it. Ah, but that's what I mean now, so it's... No. Like when somebody does the work for you, it does make it a lot easier. It's scary, cooking can be scary. I'd be afraid. <laughs> you never cook, what are you afraid of? <laughs> when do you cook? I'm, I, I'm alright at putting stuff, like cooking what? it. Like what? But like br what? bringing it together. Like what? Okay, I can make poached eggs and bacon. When's the last time you made poached eggs and bacon? Away. I made you dinner last week. What did you make? I made you pass all night. Did you really? Yes, I did. Are you sure I didn't make lasagna? No, that's the week before. It was last week because it's still in the fridge. Okay, yeah. as you can see. Does it taste cidery vinegar? Right? No, it doesn't. It tastes, it tastes sweet. It tastes almost. Uh, so I think you'll get the Chinese. Oh, it has, yeah, it does. Yeah, you know what I mean? There's uh -huh. that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a like tangerine like, orange chicken. Like a dippy of. thing for, yeah. for spring rolls or. And it's it. Don't, don't let it reduce down to the fact where it's gone because you're going to su subject it to a real intense heat in a wee minute, and and that's what you want. You want it to be. You know, you want it to start to caramelize. So once it gets to this sort of point where the butter or sorry the sugar has dissolved. There's no trace of the marmalade bar the strands of orange. That's you, you're done. So we'll turn that off. Once the fat is rendered on the gammon, then we'll go again. When you say don't reduce it down, you mean don't boil it too much? Yeah, don't put it on and walk away and start, you know, you know, finish your glass away in front of the TV. Okay. Keep your glass away in the kitchen. Okay? Cheers. Cheers. Now. So where are we at now? Uh, gamma's been in. What we're going to do now is we're going to get our roasties sorted. So, I have steamed your roasties and a few people, well not a few, just one, the guy behind the camera, has asked um, about the perfect roastie. Uh, roasties are really, do you know roasties were rated the most important, just this week, the most important part of Christmas Day lunch? Hey, come here, do you Ahead of turkey. I don't believe you. Yeah. Oh, but I like a good roasted. But come here. Do you know that if you're if you're in England, you don't get no mash potatoes. Oh. All you get roasties. Yeah, they don't do mash in England. Yeah. But anyway, your roasties have so, been. So for anybody that doesn't have the pack. Yeah, we're going to go, we're going through it now. This this right. is what you have, right? So anybody that doesn't have the pack, you have boiled your potatoes or steamed them. But to get a good roasty, that's what I'm saying, the likes of this here, that would make a really crap roasty because it's a perfectly round potato. What you sort of need to do is do that and have, have loose edges. So all this here gets nice and crispy and fluffy. And, do you know what I mean? So if you get a potato like that that's perfectly round and there's no, no, no. Yeah, it's not so good. Just, you, just, just squeeze it. Do you see, right? Um, and just do that. Do you see how you... Um, These have been salted. These have been, there's goose fat on them. We'll, uh, we'll get a wee bit of black pepper on them. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. 
You see, whenever you know how we sting them with a tea towel on them because it dries them out. Mm -hmm. You always tell me to do that. Yeah. So is that what you should do? Yeah. Well, steaming them does better. Uh, steaming better. them's better than boiling them. Oh, sorry, I took your black pepper over. I took your black pepper over. Um, steaming them is better. Do you want some you, white pepper? No, it's fine. Well, um, what you're looking to do is take as much moisture out of the potato as you can. If you boil the potato, then you're introducing it, you're, you're submerging it in water right. and you're introducing it to moisture. So what we're looking to do here, and like I say, I know this might look like crap at the minute, but all, all these wee edges are going to burn and the duck fat's going to caramelize and the herb and the salt's going to pull everything out and these are going to be a really nice roast day. So what we're going to do is put these in for about half an hour. Um, once they're going in, we're taking out our gammon, gammon yep. and we're going to start to glaze the gammon. Glaze on it. All right. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, what we're going to do now is glaze the gammon. Remember, you get the paintbrush uh, pet and start to give it a good liberal coating of Dijon mustard. This is going to add heat. Okay. Don't be afraid of it. Put it on. Plenty on. Oh, loads. You put the whole lot on. Around all uh, sides that are subject to heat. Okay, but uh, here, a wee bit. Not here, we'll just yeah, set it on the okay. board. Okay. Okay, you good? Yeah. So, Again, all over. The Dijon mustard. I've been painting up during the red pepper, I'm well used to doing this. The Dijon mustard is going to give uh, your gammon and elma the heat. It'll, uh, and then your glaze will give it an oh, elma the sweetness. It smells yummy. Huh? It smells yummy. Don't spoil my opinion. Right, now, is that okay, right? so once you get a good, you know, like say this. Plenty on. If you don't like mustard, say, oh, I don't like mustard, don't put it on. Don't, the, the mustard's going to disappear. It's just giving it heat. That's all it's doing. Okay? You done? Yeah, so don't need the papers now. No. And now we're just going to glaze it with this. This is going to start to uh, caramelize in the oven and, and put it all on. Don't be afraid of it, and every once in a while, once we're basting our turkey, we're going to spoon it back over, baste it again. And if you wanted, what you could do is put uh, grease with paper on your tray, so you don't have to. Uh, so you don't have to uh, wash it later. Wash it later, but that'll impair with the uh, the basting. Okay. So I, I'd rather. So you don't wash anyway. I'll do the washing. Or we'll just take yeah, everything up to. So we're going to take this back into the oven. We're going to put it in. What's that in there? We're going to take our turkey out. Once the, the oven's open, do everything. Yep. Okay, as you can see, the sugar is starting to crystallize, or sorry, the salt's uh, starting to crystallize. The skin's starting to turn a beautiful golden brown. We're going to baste our turkey. It's starting to look yummy. Mm. That's pretty stress free. It doesn't look like it's. Test for me. Right, so we see. Just test that there. Isn't it good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I said we've done nothing. And all this is doing now is you're just pouring the moisture back up over us. Back over your bird. It's a real crappy tray. Yeah. Huh? There we go. Get someone to give you a hand with this. If anybody's lying in front of the TV, tell them to come out and help you. You got one of them we uh you know like a proper baster or else just get someone to sign in there they're fat ass come and help you okay i'm not lying in there i'm right here side you. do you want me to open the oven door yes please okay. so this is going to go back in again uh 20 minutes 30 minutes we're not far away we're going to keep an eye on it we're going to watch our gammon make sure it doesn't burn our roasties are in we're going to forget about our roasties we want them to be beautiful and crisp or pack of calls or will not be happy. Okay, there we go. Nice high heat. Yeah. Oh, God. oh see. Nice. Right, a few questions. Oh no, we'll wait till you get to the vegetables before I ask them questions. Go ahead. another beer. The vegetables are a wee bit away, that's all right. Go ahead. Are they? No, because people had asked questions about the vegetables. Somebody had asked, how do you get a good honey roast parsnip without about boiling them and, and orange juice or was that the carrots well no you would normally you would normally boil a carrot and orange juice to add sweetness but carrots are a naturally sweet vegetable anyway 
you know, whenever we were training years ago, we would uh, maybe put sugar in the carrots, but carrots are naturally sweet. So I would omit adding anything to a carrot when I'm cooking it. But a parsnip, to get a parsnip and uh, a good honey roast is you want to take it, whenever you're boiling it, it needs to be fairly raw at the boiling stage whenever you take it off the heat. Because if you cook a parsnip the whole way through on the heat, by the time you transfer it to the oven and the honey does its thing, the carrots and mush, or the, sorry, the parsnips and mush. So what you want to be doing is taking your parsnip, and parsnips cook really, really quick, especially this time of the year. They, they, can, they can go back, they can overcook really, really quickly. If you were boiling a parsnip, you'd chat for four or five minutes. I don't really eat parsnips. Because there's points on them. Because there's points in parsnips. Yeah, how many points is in wine? Yeah, you have to save the points for the special stuff. So you don't need a parsnip, but you have any other. Yep. So what you do is take the parsnip and take it off really, really early to the point you think, oh my God, that parsnip's raw. But take it off, put the parsnip into the oven, put it in with honey, butter, salt, pepper, and just let it do its thing in the oven and just leave it alone. And then add your carrots to it if you want to do a carrot and parsnip. But don't add any more sugar to the carrots, don't add any more butter, just toss the carrots in it and let them finish out. But cook the carrots out on the heat like you a, understand? water, yeah, yeah, yeah. or steam it. So but a parsnip, a parsnip can overcook. So you're and roasting the parsnips for a good bit longer than the carrots. Well, you're you're boiling them a lot less. Yes, but uh, yeah, you're roasting them more. Yeah, right. you're boiling them a lot less. And then also, someone did ask, what about Brussels sprouts? How can you get flavour in Brussels sprouts? <sighs> so again, Do you know that they don't even eat Brussels sprouts in Brussels. I like Brussels sprouts. Uh, they're 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 a strange wee vegetable. Uh, I'd actually mind them, but what we're doing now, in my opinion, is... Yeah, is, they're, they're nice with a wee bit of bacon too. Yeah, like you say, if you didn't buy the pack and you have your uh, you have your crown coated, coated in a streaky bacon, it's nice to use that streaky, streaky bacon through your... Oh, rather than throw it out. Um, th through your vegetables. Or what you could do now too as well, is if you wanted, you could trim off your gammon, you know, you, what we're doing, and, and add bits of that through your veg, which, which we might actually do. But this is as good as I can do. What we have done here is we have steamed them. We have steamed them for 12 minutes and we've cut them in half before we steamed them. Cut the sprouts in half? Cut the sprouts in half. All the sprouts have been cut in half before we steamed them. I'm just gonna actually open this up and show you. Because it takes less time to cook them because they're cut in half. They, ma they maintain their color. Yeah, they're nice and green. Yeah. An overcooked sprout is horrible. Yeah, they're horrible to look at. They're going it's horrible. Yellow. To, but it's not that there's horrible to smell as well. So what we're going to do is. So is that because you know how people say they don't like the smell of Brussels sprouts? Is that because they cook them too much? Yeah, they're overcooked. Uh, so, but what we're going to do now is we're going to coat them in uh, butter and salt and uh, we have no black pepper. I left it work. Uh, we'll you're going to put yours in black pepper. Yeah, and we're going to we're going to put some flaked almonds on them, and these releases their natural oil which is really nutty and it's really, really good. So I think you, you'll, 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 you'll like the veg done this way. Okay? That is super tasty. Okay, we're going to check again. Whoa, wizards. Now, as you can see, it's starting to color already. There's loads of liquid down here. Do you want to taste that? Just take your finger. No, I don't want to stick my finger in this. It's, it's salty. And also very very sweet. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to keep coating this. This is going to stop our gammon drying out on top, but it's going to keep it really moist in the middle. But we want this to sort of almost look like it's burnt. Can you smell? It? Yeah. So Really really nice. The marmalade is amazing. Though. Well, the roasties are fine. We sort of just ignore them. We want right. them to do their thing with the duck fat, and you know, once in a while we'll give them a toss, but it's too early. We don't want to toss them until they've created their, so almost the skin on them, so they don't break up more than I have broken them up. Okay, so mm -hmm. your potatoes. Stuffing doesn't in yet. Stuffing should be in. Oh, good thinking about that. Uh, 
This is your stuffing. There's not a lot to say about it, bar the fact that it should be. So, <laughs> how have you made the stuffing, or should you put it in the oven and then I ask you that question? No, we'll put it in. See, it's fine. It's uh, made of fresh air. I don't like it. So, dry. at what point should the stuffing go in? We'll go in now. There it is. Okay. Alright. But, you know, the stuff is cooked. All you're looking to do is to heat it. It's fine. Oh, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? There's, there's no cooking on the stuff when the stuff is cooked. The onions have been cooked, the herbs have been cooked. All you're looking to do now is to heat it up. And again, we'll, we'll not that drop the temperature of the oven because the oven's busy. There's lots in it. If you're stuck for space in your oven, the veg doesn't need to go into the oven. You can do the veg on a pan if you wanted, which we might do to show people, or if you've loads of oven space, and yeah. it goes. Okay. So, um, we're going to check the gallon. Okay. Sure if, you you if you say so, we'll give me a cloth. Back by popular demand, here's my daughter. Hi. Hello, baby. Right. Oh. So, we have the gallon in, Molly. Right, so we're going to glaze this again? Yeah, we're going to take it out and glaze it. Starting to caramelise, lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Alright, good. Uh -huh. And like I say, this isn't a one person job. There's three of us now. Let's get your backpack popular demand. Mm -hmm. Do you want the apron, Mary? No. No? And you want to cook at home? Well, it's not because of call you, cook with daddy. Mm -hmm. As right, you so can see, this is starting to get. All the fat is, is starting to really render down and it's getting really nice and sticky. It's very really sticky. Yeah, but that's it's what you're looking for. It's getting stickier as it goes, isn't it? That's what you're looking for. You're looking for it to thicken up and, and to get sticky and all, all that goodness back over it again. Right. That's, that's what you're looking for. And while that's happening. Oh, oh. What's wrong? It's, is, that, is that the alcohol? It's a cider vinegar. Uh, so it's stingy in the eyes. It's alcohol, but sting her eyes. The wine never stings her eyes. <laughs> so, put her back in. Yeah, put her back in now, and I can say, then, then bring the turkey out, we? Okay. On the oh, bottom. Oh, that's right. Do you want me to bring the turkey? No, hold on, I'll give it a go. That's okay, I'll do it. We're going to bring the turkey out. We're going to baste it again. That's the gravy, that's your fave. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'll manage it. So, as you can see, the skin's starting to get beautiful and. Uh, is it alright to use the same basting spoon Absolutely, as yeah. the last one? Like I say, just hold the turkey back up on your head. Get all that. Uh, see, as you can see, there's no fat in this at all. This is all just natural. It's not that difficult, I can do it. This is all just natural juices and all that veg. It started to caramelize and it's all that in flavor. What we're going to do now, do you want to help? Okay, you can do the veg. So, what you can do with your veg. Well, I'll back in the oven. Back in the oven. The, um, a lot of people would probe it. But for me, the best way to check it is, is your touch. As you can imagine, uh, turkey is full of protein, and like an egg, the more it's full of protein, the, the more you cook it, the harder it'll get. So, to me, that, that that's 10 more minutes and that's done. Okay? We need to start getting our act together. So we need to start getting our act together. <laughs> okay? So we're going to heat our mash, we're going to cook our veg. So you want to take the almonds, put them in here. Okay. We're going to bring these up. Is this like butter? And did you say we were doing ours on here? We're going to do ours in the pan because like I say our oven's pretty packed at the minute. So, but if you wanted, all you could do is just throw your veg, if you have enough oven space, throw your veg on a tray, cover it with the almonds, put a couple of knobs of butter into it. Then it goes. And, and then it goes. back in the oven. Okay, so we're going to empty this into here. Okay. This is our potato mix. Which one? Into the big one. We have put no good gear. Okay, we're going to put some salt and pepper in there. We've put no oil in here. We're going to let these release their natural oils. Salt and white pepper. Salt and white pepper. Yeah, I think they're black Why? Because you're not wearing an apron. No, because mine's wearing a dress. And you're wearing jeans. It's Christmas. Because I'm wearing jeans. But nobody knows I'm wearing jeans as you say. Because all the jeans up here. I could be naked from there down. But, so but you're not. But you're not. <laughs> oh, salt and pepper in here? Uh, yeah, salt and pepper in there. I'm sure our gravy is in here. No, not a lot. Little. We'll add a little now and then we can <laughs> add more. You can always add more. <laughs> it's like you can't take more out. Yep. And you go, dump it in. Now what you're going to do now is you're going to rinse, you're going to put some hot water in that. Okay. And put the lid back on it. Give it a good swish. Okay. Pour the whole lot in. Good. Now as you can see, this is now when we get busy. The whole lot's going to come together for the last few minutes. Okay. 
right now, what can we do to help? Is this whenever people need to get helpers? Well, see, you are helping. You're taking the, care of the gamma and she's the doing the gravy. People need to get helpers. The veins are stuck coming together. This is where I says to you that I start to panic because I can't get everything ready at the one time. But there's no need to panic. Panic doesn't sort out. Maddie's going to start the gravy. The gammon and the turkey are doing the thing. Yeah. We're going to leave the roasties. Okay. Make sure they're nice and crisp. And the stuffing is in. The stuffing's in. It's wrapped in tin foil. We don't need it's to worry about it. It's not going to burn. No. And if it does burn, that's okay. That's it's nice and crispy when the is full of butter. Yeah, you dump that in there. Okay, so that's all the gravy, as you can see, cleans the whistle. All that flavor, all that time is out. Okay, we've done nothing to this. We're just gonna let these nuts release their natural oil. Then we're gonna add a knob of butter. We're gonna put a veg in, put a lid on it. If you have enough oven space, you don't need to do any of this. Just put the whole lot now. Okay, Mary's gonna whisk the gravy. Okay, we really should have bought it a lot. Sorry. So, okay, uh, mashed potatoes. You can see your potatoes in your pack have been steamed and mashed. They're completely lump free. Anybody that bought a duo pack over the time of lockdown will know exactly what they're like. These are pretty uh, simple to heat up. If you want to make a champ, now is the time you would add scallions. We're not going to do that because. It's a family dinner, a lot of kids pick the scallions out. Make a Hi, John. Not no more, but he did. The yeah. green things in my potatoes. <laughs> you remember them days? Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring this to the boil. Once it comes to the boil, we'll turn the heat down. We'll squeeze the potatoes through our fingers just to release it. We'll beat it with... Squeeze, uh, the, potato squeeze the potatoes through your fingers? Yeah, just, you know. I'll, I'll show you at the time. Just, right, just to break them down. Just to break them down, just right. so that the the, the hot the, the hot mix is flavour. Look at the way these are starting to toast. Yeah. See this? We've done nothing. We're just starting to toast. You can smell the nuts. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Okay. Now we're going to add butter now. Almonds. Couple of of butter. Yeah. Yeah. Almonds toasting on an open fire. Jack Frost. Okay, so in goes her vegetables. And again, if you don't want to use all this, I've cooked this fresh. You can keep some of this. We're not going to use it all. For tomorrow, somebody can eat. You know what I mean? This, this, this veg has been cooked fresh. Take it out of the vacuum pack, put it in a clean container, get rid of that liquid out of the bottom end because the liquid is a thing of the sour. Okay, so. Salt and pepper and that, ladies. Really. So, for a family of four, Colin, they can. A family of eight will be uh, all that. Yeah, but a family of four. A family of four will be half of that. Uh, so, they can, two be they can have half of it or tomorrow. Green grain. Green grain <laughs> Okay, so, plenty of salt and pepper. Good. Okay. Salty. We're going to toss the nuts in it. And if you wanted to at this stage, you can add a bit of honey. I don't like honey with sprouts, but if you have parsnips in it, you can see these nuts starting to caramelize beautifully. Everything's starting to come and, together. And, and if you cooked uh, a, a full bird with streaky bacon on it. And if you had streaky bacon on your bird. Cut it up now and put yeah. it in. And if you wanted, you could trim off the crispy bits of your gammon, add them into it. But you like the crispy bits of the gammon. Yeah, they're my favorite. Yeah, so we're not going to add them to the veg. Okay. So we're going to put a lid on this here now. Where is it, sweeter? Here, I have it here. There it is. On it goes. And we're going right. to forget about it. We want we want a wee bit of colour in this. Now, as you can see, this has started to come to the boil. So what we're going to do with our potatoes, is I want you to do this. Let's just do that. Okay? Squeeze I brought you down with the horrible jobs to do. Nah, that's a good. And what no. this is doing is this is releasing the. This is allowing the the cream and the butter to penetrate through to the heat to the uh, heat the potato through the middle, so you're not going to end up with lumpy bits. Because we've took the time to steam them and dry them Ow. and rice them. You good? Yeah. Can we help you? Weird. Don't wipe your hands. You've got loads to do. That whole bag has to go in. Can we do? It? No. Okay. Don't turn the heat down. And do the the butter and the cream, good gear. I see this is still, and our gravy is working away. We have forgot about what's in the oven, and that's okay. 
you don't need to worry, you don't need to panic, it think, oh, it's going to burn. If the, uh, the gammon caramelizer is great, the turkey is fine, we've basted it. Can I do this back here? Yeah, that bag as well. And again, if you don't want to use all these potatoes today, you don't have to. Okay? Yeah. Good. I'm just going to check oh, the roast sorry. potatoes. Right. Here. As you can see, these roast potatoes are starting to get beautiful and crispy around the outsides. The edges that we broke are starting to burn. So you just give them a good toss now. So we're stage. just going to turn them over. Yep. Yeah. Smell the thyme and the duck fat. Thyme? It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's Christmas Day. Do you yeah. know the thyme? Unless you're going to be, unless you're going to be a smart ass, you may know the answers along with it. It's 20 days. It's not, it's Christmas, it's, Christmas it's, lunch, day. it's lunchtime on Christmas Day. Do you want me to open this oven? Okay, so we're going to put these back into the oven. Maddie's going to finish the potatoes. And there you go. The turkey looks beautiful. We just touch our stuffing. As you can see, the butter's starting to melt in it, so it's getting really soft. And you see a bit of steam coming out of the side, see that? Yeah. Stuffing's ready to go. I see it. Gammon's beautifully oh, glazed. That's so nice. Okay, our, our, veg, our veg is on. I know the last few minutes is a bit hectic. This but is where I have the problem. But we've done nothing up until this point. No, we haven't. You know? Okay, okay. good matter. So, you wash your hands, my sweetheart? Yeah. We're going to clean this down. Maddie's going to be here two minutes and she's the place of pink star. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is you want to incorporate all that butter, cream, Salt and pepper, so that all the potatoes is nice and well flavoured and seasoned and you get beautiful creamy mash to go with your turkey and ham. Okay. So you're going to move the gravy and the veg, swap them places. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is now where you check this for seasoning. Oh, I'll do that for you. To me that needs more salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not a pepper. We're going to bring the gravy to the boil. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a little on our potatoes to, to keep that heat in to make them uh, over there to make them uh, heat th heat through so that. They're warm the whole way through and they're not burned the bottom because like I say we've dropped the heat because the potatoes are full of starch so the bottom will burn before the top's warm and if the bottom burns then your whole potato will taste charred. So we're going to drop the heat but we're going to keep a lid on it to keep the steam in. Right. And okay. you're boiling this. Yeah. I'll give this a wee shake. Do you want to taste it? Is it hot? That makes all the difference that wee shake. That wee shake makes all the difference. Now we're going to plate up. Are we? Christmas Day lunch is ready. What do we need? That's pretty stress free. Uh, we need, uh, we're not going to put it on plates. Table set. We're, going to put, it on we're going to put it on platters, put the veg in dishes, put the gravy in a sauce mm. boat, veg and potatoes. We're going to put the turkey and the ham on a platter with a stuffing down the middle, let people help, help themselves. I you need to remember that. I did the end of the stuff. <laughs> oh, you like the crispy bits? What you need to remember about turkey, turkey is um, turkey goes cold really, really, really quickly. So, we'll get everything else ready for the turkey. We're going to lift it out, we'll put a bit of tin tinfoil over it, let it rest, let the meat relax, and then we'll start to put up our veg, our potatoes, our gravy, we'll slice it in our gammon, we'll glaze it one more time. We might put a wee bit of the glaze of the gammon in there. Look how beautiful this veg has turned out. Oh, Look at the colour and the sprouts. And the red sprouts. You know, that's what you're looking for. That's that's where your flavour of vegetables come from. You're releasing their natural flavours and you're introducing uh, oils from nuts and you know what I mean? That's amazing and it's so hot. <laughs> burning, burning, burning. But that's what you want. Because like I say, your turkey is going to cool, cool down really, really quickly. So ladies. Yeah. Let's get dinner. What do you need us to do? We'll lift the gammon out of the oven. Okay, get it over here. We'll need a we need a carving knife. Can I bring one home from work? Uh, there's there's one in there, but I don't know how sharp it is. 
I thought I brought a, an orange one home. I need to go check how I got me Cabernet, is that alright? My head. Okay, so where's your, what are we oh, serving this one? Look, shall I? As you can see now, this has, uh, it is all burnt up around here, but that's what you're looking for. All that flavor has been intensified, all that liquid is gone. If you wanted, you could put some of that into your rage, but we're not really a big fan of that here to make no. it too sweet. No. So, we're just going to lift that off. Skill. <laughs> Pour the remains of that over it. Okay. Again, <laughs> don't cut it all. If you cut it all, that means it's going to dry out. And if you don't need it all, so count your people, count how many you need. We we need four here. Oh, yeah, it's really good. So, like I say, I'm so <laughs> we're just going to have my coffee. Okay, I'll get another one. See these wee bits here? Yeah. Keep these and we'll add these under our veg. Maddie, you turn the veg both down, sweetheart. Okay. We're going to leave that there. These wee bits here now, we'll just scrape these up. You're not kidding. Plop them in there. Turn the heat off on that. Good. What do you want next? Now we're going to go with the stuffing. No, actually, bring. I'm going to lift the yeah, turkey out. Really I'm going to just lift the turkey out. Let it sit for a few minutes. Stuffing. We'll just get a wee bit of tin foil. Scrape it over and just let that sit and relax. How's the roast as well? Now yeah, we go I give them a wee shake. Thank you. They're looking really, really good. Now we we'll go with the stuffing. Now again, this stuffing has been all cooked. All you're looking to do is to heat this through. And again, if you don't need to use it all, don't use it all. But this is a stuffing for a family of eight. So if you didn't want to heat it, you could have just knocked it in half. Head Can off. you reheat it again tomorrow? You could, yeah. There's nothing in here. But like you say, these are Maddie's favourite bits here. You were going to show uh, as well, maybe at the end, how see if somebody, whenever you hear turkey and ham. Yeah, once I get there up, I'll show okay, you how to do your perfect, portions. Perfect. So, the best thing to do at this oh, point really is just cut portion sizes. Mm. Just set them. You should make two hungry spars behind me. You gave it to me. We're hungry. It's Christmas. Hardly. <laughs> okay, so that's your stuffing. And it's it's so moist, it hasn't dried out at all because there's so much butter and bread come in it. Mm. So much butter and margarine in it. Like I say, all, it's all fresh herbs. There's no dried herbs. This could be kept now, put back into the oven. If anybody wants more, then they can have some more. But there's no point putting it all out and it's sitting going cold and drying out. The same as this here. Don't carve it all down right away. You said that back into the atmosphere? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm just, the uh, page was turned off. Just okay, right. so now we're going to carve down our turkey. See, so we'll just put this in here. We'll turn the potatoes up, give them a wee beat. And you're ready to go. Uh huh. Do you like candles, Mother? Yes. Yeah. And that's it. Like I say, I know the last few minutes of Christmas dinner. It's a bit hectic, but it's been pretty easy up to this point. I think everybody will agree. There's been no real stress, no real pressure. It's always just the end, isn't it? Yeah, but it's just bringing it together. Like I say, once you have a good gravy and the gravy's hot, the turkey needs to calm down and relax a wee bit because it's been a, it's been subject to intense heat now for nearly two hours. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lift that off. Okay. Yeah. We're going to take all that beautiful goodness and put it in there. Okay. Everything goes into the pot with the gravy. And again, don't cut it all. Look how moist that is inside. Look at the juices running out of it. Just cut what you need. And then we can leave the rest for tomorrow. We can make a turkey and ham portion. 
20 minutes later, your dinner for tomorrow will be ready. Oh, it look, does look very moist, doesn't it? It's so delicious. The steam coming out of it, and like I say, that's a beautiful serving platter there. We'll just touch a bit of gravy on it. Mm-hmm. Do you want to put the gravy boat? We're just going to put the gravy in our boat. Maddie's going to take that to the table. We'll kill yes, the heat sir. here. Good gear. Okay. We'll move this over here. We have our beautiful roast veg, which isn't the wrong one. <laughs> okay. We have our mashed potatoes, which are lovely and creamy and lump free. And as you can see, they're not stuck to the pot at all. We've turned the heat down, we've kept a lid on it, nothing's burnt, everything's really nice. So we just spoon them in. That's right, people. Turn off the heat and everything. And that's it, that's cooking over. And what do you need now, the roasties? And finally, it's just the roast potatoes, which we hope are beautiful, and fluffy, and crispy. As you can see, they've all crisped up. The, the thyme has dried out beautifully. We're just going to make sure that we don't get none of that fat into our tray. So we just spoon these out. What do you think, Mary? You know the crappy thing about this? We have to do this again Christmas Day. Oh, that's right. Are we ruining ruin the mystique for people? <laughs> what do you think? Mmm, yummy. And there's no mess. That's it. Three pots, four pots, two trays, and we'll serve us. Sideways, Mom, going to put the turkey in the middle there. Okay. And that's it, folks. Right, folks, that's, uh, that's our Christmas Day dinner pack. I hope yours turned out as good as ours did. Thank you so much for uh, anybody that bought it. And I hope I made your Christmas lunch a bit stress free. All right, Manny? Mm -hmm. I hope Sandy was good to everybody. I'm sure uh, he was. I'm sure he was. We just sort of. Want this been a tough year for everybody. Um, yeah. I think everybody Not has yet. felt the, the difficulties this year, but we have done everything that we could to keep red pepper in people's heads and in their hearts. And I don't know whether, I suppose it's, it's a year where nobody knew what was, what was going right or what was going wrong, but you just did what you did. So on that, have a very happy Christmas, everybody. Happy Christmas, everybody. And a happy new year. And here's hope next year brings no COVID. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.